video is out, it'll probably be too late. But happy holidays and a happy new year. During the holidays, spending time with family it helps in making memories to last a lifetime. With the current situation, we're having to spend significantly more time indoors. While we're indoors, there's not much to do. What better way to make memories indoors than movies? Watching entertaining movies can be a great pastime with your family. However, we sometimes tend to spend more time looking for movies than actually watching them. There have been times when we couldn't find a movie and ended up not watching anything at all. An easy solution to this would be a movie recommendation system. My past TensorFlow videos have done quite well, and seeing as TensorFlow has its own recommendation system, we gave it a try. Speaking of family, this is my 15-year-old cousin, who is visiting alongside my aunt and uncle for the holidays. She also wanted to help out with this video, so she'll be introducing the project. Hi everyone, I'm Anvisha. This project implements neural collaborative filtering with the neural matrix factorization model. This is a general framework for filtering recommendations where the neural network architecture is used to portray the user item interactions. It doesn't resort to matrix factorizations with an inner product, however it replaces it with a multi-layer function. Using TensorFlow Lite, you can train a model using this movie lens dataset, or even your very own custom dataset. In this video, we'll be showing you how to train a model using the movie lens dataset. This dataset is a collection of 1 million ratings of 3.9 thousand movies by almost 6,000 users. The Group Lens Research Project is a research group based in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at the University of Minnesota. The ratings are based on a 5 star scale, with 1 being the worst and 5 being the best. To demonstrate the TF Lite model, we'll show you how to build an Android app utilizing it. The TensorFlow documentation that we're following will be linked in the description below. If you haven't seen Armand's TensorFlow Object Detection API tutorial, I'd highly recommend you to take a look in, at the first part in which he shows you how to install Anaconda as well as TensorFlow GPU. With the new release of TensorFlow 2.4, there are new CUDA and CUDNN versions that need to be installed to use the GPU version. Before we move on to the tutorial, we'll be assuming that CUDA, CUDNN, and Anaconda are installed. The TensorFlow documentation covers instructions for training on Colab, but in this video I'll be training locally. Once you've installed Anaconda, you should be able to open up an Anaconda prompt. Before we get started, let's create a folder in our C drive called TensorFlow. This folder will hold the TensorFlow examples repository, which we'll be downloading in a bit. In Anaconda, let's first create a virtual environment to avoid uh, version conflicts with previously installed packages in our system. We can do this with a conda create minus n mrs remove recommendation system. We can set the Python version as 3.8. Now we can activate the virtual environment with conda activate mrs. Then we can navigate to the uh, TensorFlow directory that we created earlier with cdc slash tensor, oh whoops, not c slash temp, cdc slash tensorflow. And then from here, we can clone the TensorFlow examples repository with this command here. git clone github.com slash tensorflow slash examples. The directory containing all the necessary files will be located at examples slash light slash examples slash recommendation slash ml, which you can cd into. After doing so, we can install the prerequisites from the requirements.txt file. This might take some time, so I'll be right back when this is all done. Now, once everything is installed, we're going to want to install TensorFlow GPU. While the requirements.txt installed TensorFlow, it didn't install the GPU support. We can install the GPU version with pip install TensorFlow GPU. Whoops. Now we can test our installation by entering a Python terminal. Import TensorFlow as TF. And if you get this error, you can fix it simply by installing an older version of NumPy. 
uh, a version that I found to work was NumPy 1.19.3. So pip install NumPy equals equals 1.19.3. And now we can test it out again. Import TensorFlow as TF. They sent everything imported properly. And if we print the TF underscore underscore version, we get 2.4.0, which is the one we installed. And also I found some errors with the newest version of Pandas, which was released uh, five or six days ago. So you can install an older version of pandas, pandas with pivot stop pandas equals equals 1.1.5. That's the version that I found to work. But if you're watching this uh, pretty uh, far in the future, then you might want to skip this step because it'll probably be patched. And now once we've installed pandas, we can uh, download the movie lens data set as well as pre-processing pre it with this command right here, python minus m data dot example underscore generation underscore movie lens. But since this is for the collab notebook, I adjusted it in a text editor, which is right here. So you can copy it and paste this command. The following commands are gonna be pretty long, so you might want to copy and paste them from the documentation here. And now this might take a while, so I'll be right back when this is done. Once the dataset is generated successfully, you should get output that looks something like this. If you check the data folder inside the recommendation slash ml directory, you should now find two folders called examples and raw. If you have these folders, that means you're ready to train. The command to train the model is quite long, so I recommend copying and pasting it from the documentation. To make it a bit easier, I put it into a text editor to copy and paste. When training starts, you'll notice that I'm getting an error. Apparently people were encountering this error on my previous tutorials as well. I'm not sure why it occurs, but a common pattern I found was that it only appears while I'm recording. I can usually fix it by restarting my system. I'll do so now and I'll show what training looks like afterwards. I managed to get the program to run by running the program before starting to record. And now that I've started recording, you might notice it stopped but after you start training, you'll receive logs of every single epoch. Since 10,000 epochs are specified in the command, we'll have to stop it manually to save time. I usually stop training around the 250th epoch, but you can go on as long as you like for more accuracy. This may take a few hours depending on your system, so I'll be back when it's all done. After a few hours, I've now stopped training. We're now ready to export. With this command right here, you can export your model directly to the TF Lite model format. And once this is done, we can find our model in recommendation slash ml slash model model dir. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you should find the export directory, which has our model.tf Lite as well as a saved underscore model.pb. We're now going to want to copy and paste our model.tf Lite to recommendation slash android slash app slash source slash main slash assets. And now you're going to want to open up your config.json file in the text editor. Under the model tag, you're going to want to add model.tf Lite instead of recommendation CNN. We can save, exit, and now we're ready to build our Android app. I just did a fresh installation of Android Studio 4.1.1 and the Android SDK. From this screen, click open an existing project. And then from here, go to C slash TensorFlow slash examples slash light slash examples slash recommendation slash android and then hit ok and 
and from here you can see that there is a Gradle build going on but I'm going to create a virtual device or uh, an AVD so go to help find action AVD manager and then from here I have my uh, pixel 3 API I'm going to create a new virtual device let's just use the pixel 3 again hit next you can use uh, one of these system images I already have R pre-downloaded for Android 11 and the API level 30 so I'll just use that and then we can use pixel 3 API 30 that's a fine name and then hit finish and there we go and now that the Gradle build is finished, we can just hit run. And I've already uh, done this project before, so I've installed the necessary packages. But if you get errors for uninstalled packages, then you can make sure you just fix them and restart the video. But here we go, our virtual device started up. Gradle is finished, so our app will be coming up anytime now. And there we go, we have our movie recommendation system. Now if we click on any one of these movies, we'll immediately get some recommendations. So let's just say Star Wars Episode 4 A New Hope. And there we go, we have recommendations based on this pick. You can select more than one uh, favorite movie and we'll get even more recommendations. Congratulations, we've done it. we made a TensorFlow Lite movie recommendation system as well as an Android app alongside it. Great job, and until next time, bye.